Hello, David Diga Hernandez here, and you are watching Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. How can you know for sure if you truly have the Holy Spirit? Well, I want to give you seven biblical signs that will prove once and for all that you have the Holy Spirit. So, if you've ever doubted or wondered concerning the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life, or if you know someone who wonders if they have the Holy Spirit, then this message is for you. These truths will solidify this revelation in your heart once and for all. But first, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's gonna lead you in some very anointed worship, and then we're gonna get right into this message. Here is Stephen Moctezuma. And I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night. They tell me that you're pleased and that I never alone you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and i'm loved by you it's who i am it's who i am it's who i am And I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say a word. So the first sign of the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life is this. Number one, confidence in salvation. Romans chapter 8 verse 16 says, For his spirit joins with our spirit 
to affirm that we are God's children. So many believers doubt or wonder whether or not they have the presence of the Holy Spirit in their life. They ask things like, have I truly received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Or has the Holy Spirit left me because of some mistake that I've made? But the wonderful truth that the scripture gives to us is this. When the Holy Spirit takes up residence in the individual, that is the person who has received Christ as Lord, then the Holy Spirit gets to work at affirming the truth, namely that you belong to God in your heart. So the Holy Spirit is the one who convinces us that we are children of God. The Holy Spirit is that voice, that assurance, that seal of promise upon us that tells us that we in fact belong to God. So confidence in your salvation is proof, is a sign that the Holy Spirit dwells in you. Now, I understand that this might make some believers a little bit nervous because when hearing this, those of you who are wondering, do I have the presence of the Holy Spirit, may say to yourself, well, I wonder if I have the presence of the Holy Spirit and therefore I probably don't have the presence of the Holy Spirit. But it's not really that simple. You see, whereas the Holy Spirit is constantly speaking to us and affirming to us that we are in fact children of God, the enemy is also speaking. The enemy is also sowing seeds of doubt. So this measurement of, well, I have doubt and therefore I don't belong to God is not a good measurement at all because there is a war. There is a battle. There is a inner dialogue. It goes back and forth between good and evil. And this inner dialogue causes us to at one moment believe that we belong to God and in the next moment doubt that we belong to God. But this is how you know you have the presence of the Holy Spirit. Deep within your spirit, you know that you know that you know that you belong to God. There is confidence deep within you. Now, you may battle in your emotions. On some days, you may not feel like you belong to God. You may battle mentally. You may sometimes think like you don't belong to God. But deep within your spirit, there is always this underlying peace, this deep and still knowing that you, in fact, have salvation, that you, in fact, are a child of God. And that truly is the work of the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. So number one, a sign that you have the presence of the Holy Spirit is that you are confident in your salvation. Number two is godly character. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 23 say, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Character, not charisma, is the standard of the Spirit. You know that you have the presence of the Holy Spirit, not necessarily because the power of God rests on your life, though that is one of the signs, but because the character of Christ is being developed in you. The character of Christ is the ultimate sign that you, in fact, belong to God, that you, in fact, carry the presence of the Holy Spirit. You see, people can fake the power. They can pretend to pray in tongues. They can pretend to do miracles. They can pretend to live godly lives all while living a double standard. But the proof that you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the proof that the Holy Spirit's presence dwells in you, is that you are a little bit more like Jesus today than you were yesterday. The proof is in how you live. The proof is in how you carry yourself. The proof is in how you walk according to godly standards. Are you living with godly character? Number three, passion and power for evangelism. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You'll notice here that the scripture tells us that when the presence of the Holy Spirit comes upon someone, or when His power comes upon someone, they become witnesses. So, we see that an individual will receive a power to evangelize and a passion to evangelize, a desire to carry that out. There is this godly boldness that comes over someone who has been baptized in the Holy Spirit. When you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, His passion 
becomes your passion. And His passion is the name of Jesus. His passion is the gospel. The Holy Spirit is heaven's greatest evangelist. The Holy Spirit is heaven's greatest worship leader. Nobody loves Jesus like the Holy Spirit loves Jesus. Nobody loves the gospel like the Holy Spirit loves the gospel. Nobody desires to win the lost like the Holy Spirit desires to win the lost. And when His presence dwells in your life, that power and that passion both become evident in you. Number four, the evidence of speaking in tongues. Now, I want to be very clear here because this is where a lot of the debate centers around. Some will say that you need to pray in tongues in order to be saved, or you need to pray in tongues in order to prove that you have the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. Now, this isn't true. I must say this, I believe in the gift of speaking in tongues. I believe in it strongly, in fact, more so than most people who you'll hear. And I talk about it more often than most people you'll hear. But I want to emphasize here that speaking in tongues is not the sign that you've received the Holy Spirit. It is a sign that you've received the Holy Spirit. It's a manifestation of an inner reality. It is not in and of itself the reality. So, Acts chapter 2, verses 32 through 33 say this, God raised Jesus from the dead, and we are all witnesses of this. Now he is exalted to the place of highest honor in heaven at God's right hand, and the Father, as he had promised, gave him the Holy Spirit to pour out upon us, just as you see and hear today. Well, what were the people seeing the church do? They were seeing the church receive the Holy Spirit. They were seeing the fire of God come upon the church. So they were seeing the power of the Holy Spirit. Number two, it says, and hear. Well, what were they hearing? They were hearing the believers praying in tongues. They were hearing the believers praying in their own languages, which was a supernatural manifestation based upon what they were praying as what many would call gibberish. These people were speaking in, in what some would call gibberish, but the hearers heard it in their own language. I know that because the crowd, singular, spoke in tongues, and each, which represented multiple languages, heard them in their own language. So, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 39, the Bible says, So, my dear brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy, and don't forbid speaking in tongues. Well, some would say, well, praying in tongues is the supernatural ability to pray in an earthly language. This is not so because 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 2 says, For if you have the ability to speak in tongues, you will be talking only to God, since people won't be able to understand you. You will be speaking by the power of the Spirit, but it will all be mysterious. No one can understand because tongues is not an earthly language. It can manifest as an earthly language miraculously, but at its source, it is what many would call gibberish. But we know there is power in that heavenly language. So, that is one of the signs of speaking in tongues. Number five, a love for Jesus. Romans chapter 5 verse 5 says, And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us, because He has given us the Holy Spirit, to fill our hearts with His love. The Holy Spirit places the love of God within you. Not only do you learn to love others as the presence of the Holy Spirit is manifested in your life, but you also develop a passionate love for the person of Jesus. You develop a love for Jesus Himself. As I said earlier, nobody loves Jesus like the Holy Spirit loves Jesus. And if you'll surrender to Him, the Holy Spirit wants to place this love in your heart. He wants to fan into flame the fires of first love. He wants to cultivate within you a passion for the name of Jesus. When you have the presence of the Holy Spirit, you know it because you're obsessed with Jesus. When you have the presence of the Holy Spirit, you know it because you can't stop talking about Jesus. You want to talk to your friends about Jesus. You want to talk to your family about Jesus. You want to talk to your coworkers about Jesus. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, it's Jesus, 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 Jesus. You become a Jesus person. Why? Because the Holy Spirit came to glorify 
Jesus. He came to testify of Jesus. And so when you get the presence of the Holy Spirit like that, that same passion, that same love spills over you from deep within your spirit and you become obsessed with Jesus. It is a holy obsession that overtakes your being and you become 100% a Jesus person. You talk Jesus. You think Jesus. You live Jesus. You breathe Jesus. Everything in you wants to know and share about Jesus. So that's number five, a love for Jesus. Number six, knowledge of truth. First John chapter 2 verse 27 says, but you have received the Holy Spirit and he lives within you. So you don't need anyone to teach you what is true for the Spirit teaches you everything you need to know and what he teaches is true. It is not a lie. So just as he has taught you, remain in fellowship with Christ. When the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within you, when the presence of the Holy Spirit has overtaken your life, truth overflows your being. Truth is received deep within. Truth becomes your portion. You receive revelation from God. You begin to understand the deeper things of the scripture. You begin to understand the truth of God's presence. You begin to understand the truth of holiness. You understand the truth of the word, the truth of the cross and the blood. And these truths become yours. These treasures that God has hidden only for those who love him, only for those who he can trust, only for those who carry his spirit, those treasures become yours. And finally, number seven, and this should be an obvious one, one of the signs that you have received the presence of the Holy Spirit, or that you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, is that you walk in holiness. Number seven is holiness. First Peter chapter 1, verse 2 says, God the Father knew you and chose you long ago, and His Spirit has made you holy. As a result, you have obeyed Him and have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. May God give you more and more grace and peace. The Spirit has made you holy. Well, he is called the Holy Spirit. I like to call him the Holiness Spirit. In other words, when you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, sin begins to lose its allure. Sin starts to look like what it is. Disgusting, dark, vile. You begin to hate what God hates when the Holy Spirit dwells in you. Even if what the Holy Spirit hates is something that you do. This is a mark of the Spirit filled. They walk in holiness. They resist sin. They flee temptation. They don't set evil things before their eyes. They don't talk about evil things. They don't even want to hear evil things. They live sanctified. They live separate. They live in the protection of God's presence. And that is a sign, a true sign, that you have the Holy Spirit. So to recap, number one, confidence in salvation. Two, godly character. Three, passion and power for evangelism. Four, the evidence of speaking in tongues. Five, a love for Jesus. Six, knowledge of the truth. And seven, holiness. So, let me ask you, do you carry any of these markers in your life? Now, you may lack some. You may be working on some. You may be growing in some. And that's okay. As long as there is progress, that means the Holy Spirit is at work. So, if you have these signs in your life, you don't need to worry. Stop doubting. Stop fretting. If you don't have any of these signs in your life, and I think it's time that you come to meet Jesus. I think it's time that you come to truly be filled with His Holy Spirit. Because those who meet Jesus receive His Spirit. It's that simple. At salvation, you receive the Holy Spirit. So, if you're not sure if you're saved, maybe you doubt your salvation. I want to pray with you. Now, you have to understand that you aren't saved by a prayer. You're saved by a person. Prayer never saved a soul. Only Jesus saves. So as you repeat after me now, you're not being saved by this prayer. This is not a ritual. And you're not finished just because you pray this prayer. This is just the starting point. All I'm doing is leading you in surrendering to Jesus. But you have to actually surrender to Him. And when you do, He'll fill you with His Holy Spirit. Maybe you're a believer 
and you have some doubts. Maybe you're someone who's never received Christ, or maybe you're someone who did at one point, but you've never seen this fruit manifest, so you doubt if, whether or not that conversion experience was real in the first place. Well, let's be finished with this. Let's settle the matter right now. Let's come to Jesus. Let's go to Him together. I'm going to talk to Him right now, and I want you to talk to Him with me, and He's going to hear you. He's looking at you right now. He's listening to you right now. He sees you. He hears you. He loves you. He's calling you. You're not watching this by accident. Let's pray and repeat after me and say it to him from your heart. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. And I ask you, forgive me of my sin. Wash me in your blood. Make me new. I don't understand it all, but I turn to you now. I need your help, Jesus. Forgive me. Save me. And be my Lord. I'm turning everything over to you now. I'll follow you. In your name I pray. Amen. Well, that is it for the lesson and the prayer. And if you prayed that, I'm so glad and I'm so happy that we were able to experience this together. You just gave your heart to Jesus. And if you truly, sincerely prayed that from deep within your heart and and you actually approached God and you actually came to Him in sincerity, I believe He heard you. Now work out your salvation with Him. He finished everything that needed to be done to save you. Just approach Him and go to Him. Well... I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We are praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. And if you'd like information on how you can join the Spirit family, then go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. When you sign up, by the way, it's 100% free, you'll receive a brand new teaching from me every single week via email, as well as a brand new worship cover from Stephen Moctezuma. And the best part, you can reply to that email for prayer support from our ministry staff. Join the Spirit family today. Now over 7,000 members strong. We are quickly approaching 8 thousand members. Now to your comments. And these comments are coming from my last video, which was the closer to my series on religious spirits. I did a three-part series on religious spirits. You have to go check that out to make sure you never fall under the trap of religious burdens. And that series was near and dear to my heart because I was under the influence of a religious spirit very early on in my Christianity. I, I walked around with guilt and shame and God really had to set me free from that. So I want you to check that out. But that's where these comments are from. And by the way, if you want me to potentially read your comments on next week's edition of Spirit Church, then go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section now. And while you're at it, by the way, make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so that you can receive all of our content. So here are the comments from last week's teaching. Smita Sona writes, Such an awesome work of the Holy Spirit. I love you, Jesus. Just five minutes earlier, when I received your message notification while working, the Holy Spirit told me that the spirit of pride is the most dangerous spirit. Your message just arrived so timely. God bless you, Brother David. You speak so boldly the promptings of the Holy Spirit and the true teaching of Christ. God bless you and your ministry. You know, we often get people telling us that they listened to the message just in time or that the words were just what they needed to hear. You know why that is? It's because this is the Holy Spirit's channel, and He can do with it whatever He wants to do. Albert Colonian writes, God bless you, Brother David. Your teachings bring light to a lot of people, even believers. We are proud of you, man of God. Well, Albert, I appreciate the encouragement, and we know that all the glory belongs to Jesus. TL writes, Oh, wow, I just searched religious spirits, and this video came up. It wasn't until after I finished watching it that I realized that it was just posted today. It was right on time because I needed to see this. I recognize myself in just about all of these points. I have repented. Please pray for me. Thank you and God bless. Well, TL, I so appreciate your transparency and honesty. And I'm very glad to know that the Holy Spirit worked on your heart and that you repented, responded to His voice. That's awesome to hear and I'm glad you were liberated. And the final commenter, Ryan D. Neely writes, Honestly, I thought when I listened to this message that I was going to gain insight on religious leaders and the things they do because of their pridefulness. Instead, 
I actually learned a lot about myself and see areas where I need some reparation. I can see where I tried to use Christianity to measure up to others. But instead, I believe Jesus wants us to measure down so that he can increase. Thank you so much, Brother Hernandez, for this awesome message. May the Lord continue to use you as he is now so doing. Well, I want to encourage all of you, go and watch that series and really open your heart and say, Okay, Holy Spirit, if you got to hit me hard, hit me hard. But anything that's in me that's not of you, I want you to take it out. Go and watch that series. I challenge you with an open heart. I want to share a scripture with you before I go. This is found in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25. The scripture says, The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. When you do for others the things that you want others to do for you, that opens the door for the miraculous. The scripture makes it very clear that when you're generous, that generosity, like a river, flows. Generosity is a flow. And if you want to receive, you have to learn to release. I want to challenge you now. Perhaps you've been watching these teachings for quite some time, or perhaps you're new to our channel. Maybe you're receiving our emails. Maybe you've been to a ministry event. Maybe you've read one of our books, watched one of our TV programs. However it is that you've come to connect with this ministry, I don't believe God joined us together by accident. I believe there's a purpose behind this. And I want to challenge you to partner with this ministry. Our ministry is rapidly expanding. Our events are growing. Almost everywhere we go and hold an event now, there are no seats left and the event is overflowing to overflow room and then we have to turn people away. Our media reach is growing rapidly. So those two things, those are what we do. Media and events. Why do we do it? Because we want to win souls and build believers. So help us today on our mission. We believe there's coming a day where we're going to see stadiums filled. Already we're seeing expansion in our ministry because we're building a brand new ministry headquarters TV studio that's going to help us reach many, many, many more people. That is almost done. So if you gave toward that, I want you to know we've been working with the city on the permits and that's what's taking so much time is the city. But everything's coming together decently and in order. And I cannot wait to show you the finished result. But if you've yet to partner with us or you're someone who's praying about partnering with us, whether that's monthly or one time, do it today at davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. So if you're giving a one-time gift, do it now. Some people give $5 and we have people who give all the way up into the six figures to the ministry. Wherever you fall on that spectrum, act today. But if you will partner with me, this means sign up to automatic giving. If you will partner with me for $30 or more a month, I will send you either Carriers of the Glory, Encountering the Holy Spirit in Every Book of the Bible, and 25 Truths About Demons and Spiritual Warfare. And again, that's for those of you who will sign up to become a monthly giver. You sign up for monthly giving, I'll send you one of those books, your choice. I'll sign it for you as my initiation gift. So go do it right now. Don't delay. God wants to unleash that river of generosity. God wants to, God wants to flow through you and use you in this area. Sign up now davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.